Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So I wanted to talk about Logseek templates. What are they? How do you use them? But also how do you organize them? Because I've used two different methods of organizing and I want to show you both so you can pick whatever suits you. So let's talk about Logseek templates and how do you use them? I got my laptop open here and as you can see, there is a block called project template, which has a template name. Now this property that's in here, let me zoom in a bit, is the name that you're going to find it as. If you do slash template, you look for this name and I will demo that shortly. And then the other one is template include parent and default it's true and here it's false. In practice, that means is this top block included? So if you have false, it will just get these bottom blocks here. And that's very useful if you're using it to create templates for pages. If you want to have it true, it's more a template of a block. Now, let me show you both of those. I'll just give it a demo true name and I'm going to say template, pick project, and then it fills it in. As you can see, this puts everything on the top level. And this is why you don't want the parent included because there's a couple of elements here that are supposed to be in the line. You see this special property here, which says deadline in two months. And this is a caching thing in Logseek because what it's actually putting there is a link to a fixed date in the future. You can use this syntax with any type of human readable format. So you can put like today in it, tomorrow, a specific time, current time I believe works. There's a couple of variables. I'll link to the documentation in the description down below. Now, if you also want to use it in blocks, so for example, when I do a journal thing, I have like uh, my journal going on in the day and I'm making some notes and I might want to, you know, add some meeting notes. So then I go to templates and I pick meeting in this case. And as you can see, that's a block with sub blocks. So here I do get the top meeting. Uh, this is what I usually use. So I have it marked down with a tag for meeting. And I have a property called at, which I mean attending. And then I put names linking to people, meaning that if I talk to them later, I know that we've been in a meeting together. And then there's notes and action items or whatever you need to get this block set up. Right. So now I'm going to talk about how to organize these templates because there were two methods that I was using. And the first one I want to talk about was the sort by type. So what I did is I had one page for a type in this example that I have in my system, it will be book and you have elements in it and those elements point towards that type. And then inside that setup, I have a table, which is just a query that points back to the elements and I have the template itself. Now, let me quickly show you how that looks in my demo. So I go to the book type and then what you can see here is I have book and then a table for the elements in book. And then the template is right below it. This is nice because you have everything compact and together and works pretty well. And then to find the templates, because they were all over the place, I had a special query for it. So if I go to templates, which is a page I have in here that has that query in it, as you can see, I do a simple query that says property template, meaning any block with the property template. And because those are templates, you'll get all your templates in one view. Now, and then you see here all the templates that are in my demo Logseek graph. Now, this worked well because I had everything compact and in the same spot. And with the search query that I have that shows everything that allowed me to find the page. But in practice, I wanted something which had more of a hierarchy to it so I could find templates and immediately go to them instead of using a query to find them. And that's how I ended up using a hierarchy for it. So in that new structure, what I did is I split it up into two pages. And the first page is the one that we already saw. So in this case, I have like a project page or a book page. And that one has the simple query that says like, find me any page with this specific property, or maybe even any block with that property, depending on how you use your pages and blocks. Finally, I have another page called template slash, and then the name of the template. So in this case, template slash project. And that means that that page just has the template. This gives me a couple of benefits. Now, let me show you that. Uh, one is that I can do things like TAM and then say uh, project. And as you can see, then the template project is there and it shows me the template straight away. It keeps it clean. It means that if I go to the project page itself, that will just have the query and no more templates in it. But also I get this 
structure that I would like. So if I go down here, you can see like the hierarchy structure. And if I go to template, this still has the query because in this demo, I'm showing both. But in the bottom, you can also see if I scroll all the way down that you get the hierarchy here and it says template meeting and template project, meaning that I can find all my templates using this structure and I can even subdivide my templates in. You do still have to provide that template name to make it easy to find. But to me, it makes it much easier because I either go to the page where I want to see all the elements or I go to the page with the template. It does mean that you have to organize a bit more. Both methods are valid. I currently prefer the last one. I might go back to the first one over time. I never know because, you know, I'm always tweaking and messing with my Loxy graph to find out what works best. Just use any of these. Remember, you're awesome. Keep it up. See you in the next one.